recognized for five minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, questions are for Director Clapper and Deputy Secretary Work. I sit on a joint task force along with Mr. Calvert and Mr. Wenstrup that was looking into the manipulation of intelligence at Central Command. Have both of you had a chance to read the interim report that the task force filed? Uh, you, you mean the committee report? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've read it. Mr. Work? I've not read it in detail, sir. <clears throat> In, in that, there are pretty clear uh, cases of intelligence manipulation. And my question is, what accountability for any person associated with that has been held to date? Mr. Work? Uh, sir, uh, what we have been waiting on is the completion of the IG investigation. Mr. Work, it's been, just for the record, it's two years. We have soldiers in the field, and we had intelligence that wasn't getting to the right place to keep these young men and women safe so that we could make good policy decisions. It's been two years. To tell a soldier that you're waiting on an IG report is unacceptable. Tell me who's been held accountable. Um, I would have to ask uh, Under Secretary of uh, Defense Letcher if any particular people have been held accountable. What the Secretary and I have said over and over and over again, we expect the highest standards in the intelligence community. Did we get that, Mr. Work? Um, Did well, our soldiers get that? The IG report will tell us, but as Director Clapper spoke to uh, the overall assessment is that we are improving. Congressman, I'll just add, uh, we are not able to take uh, authoritative um, personnel-related actions on, on these instances and allegations until the IG investigation is done. It has taken quite a while. Uh, I think we are as, um, we are as eager as, as this committee is to get the results of that IG investigation and be able to take action on those. Uh, in the interim, there are some uh, systemic and management uh, act actions that we have taken uh, on the DOD side, working closely with Director Clapper and his team. Um, first and foremost, as Director Clapper mentioned, in the natural change changeover of duties at Central Command with the Commander and the J-2, uh, we both have, uh, along with General Stewart, the Director of DIA, strongly emphasized uh, the need for the J-2 um, to look at its business practices and ensure that all analysts have the ability to call it like they see it and speak truth to power. Uh, in addition, more broadly across the enterprise, we've taken a number of initiatives to reinforce the importance of analytic integrity. We're in the process of ensuring that every organization has an analytic ombudsman in place, someone that analysts can come to anonymously and report concerns that they may have and have an advocate to senior well, leaders I'm, and I'm, a number I'm, of I'm other glad, initiatives. I'm glad you're doing those things. Those all sound great to me. Um, I have to tell you that the American people and our soldiers and sailors, airmen and Marines deserve not to wait two years to hold accountable folks who put bad information in the field. Uh, Director Clapper, there are reports, uh, press reports that indicate that there was information withheld from a presidential uh, daily briefing uh, until after General Austin had testified. Are you aware of the reports and if so, are those reports accurate? Uh, I'm aware of the reports and uh, the uh uh, examination done by uh, our analytic integrity officer didn't find any uh, uh, substantiation of that. There are also press reports, Director Clapper, that you had, uh, and, and our, t our task force also um, looked into this, that you had direct conversations with General Groves with great frequency, uh, circumventing the chain of command there, uh, and yet you testified that, um, uh, quote, intelligence, this was before the Senate Armed Services Committee, intelligence assessments from CENTCOM come to the national level only through the DIA. How do you square conversations that you're having with uh, the J-2 at one command with that testimony? The conversations I had with the J-2 by VTC were uh, only for uh, tactical updates, uh, not to discuss uh, broad assessments. Um, the and I will also comment that in every one of these, there was a split screen, and the JCS J2 was always represented in, in the, these dialogues. What, so the reference to uh, assessments finding their way into, say, national intelligence estimates or PDB articles is done through the Defense Intelligence Agency, not direct from CENTCOM or any other uh, combatant command. Great. Thank you, Director Clapper. Uh, Director Clapper, uh, President Obama removed Iran Air's designation as a proliferator of weapons of mass destruction on January 15, 2016, as part of the JCPOA. Did Iran Air's activities change in any way to prompt this removal?
Uh, I believe, uh, if, if I'm correct, Iran is still a state sponsor of terrorism. I don't think we've reclassified Iran. Right, no, that's my question. But the President removed Iran Air's designation as a proliferator of weapons of mass destruction and a provider of material support to the IRGC as part of the JCPOA, or simultaneously with the JCPOA, more properly. Can you tell me if Iran Air's behavior changed in any way or has changed to justify such a removal? Um, I can't say that uh, Iran's behavior is, uh, has changed. Uh, it has continued uh, aggressive uh, missile uh, development and missile fielding. Um, I think in terms of its uh, proliferating uh, to other countries, uh, I don't think, I, ca I can't, I'd have to research that and provide on a classified basis uh, if we have information on that. Thank you, Director Clever. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Himes.